Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Destructible 2D to make a basic destructible scene. Let's begin by importing some textures. Here we have a ground texture, a rock texture and a tree texture. Let's select them all and change the texture type to Sprite and then click apply. Let's begin with the ground sprite. Let's drag and drop that into our scene and then to set it up, find the sprite renderer component and click the gear icon at the top right corner. This opens the context menu and then because the ground doesn't move we're going to use the make destructible preset static. So now if we go to the main camera we can zoom it in a bit, we can change the backdrop color and we can click add component and then we can add the click to spawn component. We can change the prefab here by clicking to assets and then adding the red explosion prefab. So this component, when we click mouse zero, which is the left mouse button, it's going to spawn the red explosion underneath the mouse. This also works on mobile devices when you tap a finger. So let's click play. And then now if I tap on the screen, you see it spawns the red explosion. And if I tap on the ground object, you see it cuts holes into the sprite. And if I select the ground game object, you can see the collider here, the edge collider has automatically updated the shape based on the damage we've done. If you don't like this damage shape, then just go to the prefab here, the red explosion. You can either modify this or duplicate it. And inside the prefab, you will see it has the explosion component. And inside here, we have the stamp shape. And you can choose any texture you like here. The only requirement is that the texture must be readable and the destruction shape must be stored in the alpha channel. So next, let's add the rock. Let's move it up here. And to set this up, let's go to the context menu again for the sprite renderer. And then this time we're going to add the make destructible dynamic splittable preset. So let's click that. And you can see our rock has been set up. So dynamic just means it can move using the physics and splittable means if you cut it in half then it's going to split into two or more pieces. So if we click play and if we click on our rock you can see it splits into lots of objects. So here you can see each separate object has been split into a new game object and they each have their own colliders. So next let's add the tree and the big difference between the tree and these two other objects is that we want the tree to be both static and dynamic. We want it to be static as long as it's connected to the ground and we want it to be dynamic when it breaks off from the ground. So to do that, let's open the context menu again. And this time we'll go to dynamic detachable. And inside the tree game object now, we have a child called fixture. This allows you to specify where the ground is. So here we're going to select the base of the tree. Remember, this has to be part of the actual sprite. So here, we're going to put it at the base. We can't put it on the ground here because that's no longer connected to the sprite. So we're going to put it here. And now when we hit play, you can see we can destroy the top of the tree and then it's going to break off. So basically any detached part that is no longer connected to this is going to become a dynamic sprite. If it's still connected like this part of the tree, then it's going to remain connected and it's going to remain static. So that's the basics of how to set up Destructible 2D. These three objects are very commonly used. But one really important thing you also should know is that all of these objects are currently using the original sprites alpha data. For example, this tree uses the alpha data here, which is the destruction data. This has a width of 136 pixels and a height of 293 pixels which means a total of 18,000 pixels are used to calculate the destruction. This is very high resolution and may cause performance issues on mobile devices. So to reduce this, you can click the optimize button here. And if I click that, you will notice the graphics remain almost exactly the same in our game view here. But the amount of pixels used for destruction is exactly half the width and half the height, which means four times less pixels, which is just 4,600 pixels which is much better on mobile devices. You can click this button as many times as you like, but each time I click it, you will notice the graphics slightly change and they degrade each time. 
eventually it stops looking like a tree and is no longer usable. Like in this case, there are only 73 pixels used to define the shape of the tree. So if you've accidentally clicked optimize too many times, then just click rebuild and it's going to go back to the original state. So for this sprite, maybe we can optimize it once or twice. For this video, I'm just going to optimize it once and I'm going to do the same thing for the rock. I'm going to optimize that once and then the ground sprite, I'm going to optimize that once. So you'll want to optimize this as many times as you can get away with uh, based on your game, the graphics you need and the performance you want. So now if we hit play, you can see I can destroy the rock, I can damage the ground and I can break the tree and I have really good performance. And this will also work well on most mobile devices. And that's it for the basics of how to use Destructible 2D. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask them below. And thanks for watching.